This video is going to focus on acids, alkalized bases and salts. So when you think about acids, you probably think uh, of some of their key characteristics, in particular their corrosive nature. Uh, and it tends to be the case that less dilute acids, those that are the more concentrated, can be corrosive in nature. Corrosive means that the um, acid is able to um, damage or uh, to eat away at metals or other materials or even organic tissue. Hence why it's often given this has symbol here with a few droplets of acid uh, eating into and damaging, either corroding uh, the um, metal or the flesh of the person's hand. Um, but that's quite a sort of colloquial way of thinking about acids. And, and as scientists, we want to think about them more in terms of their behaviour on a chemical level, on a, on a molecular level. So um, what do acids actually do? Well, acids um, all contain hydrogen ions somewhere in their structure. And all acids are hydrogen ion donators in aqueous solution. That means that when they are dissolved in water, they tend to release their H plus or hydrogen ions uh, into solution. And it's the hydrogen ions and their protonation of other materials which actually accounts for the acidic behavior of all acids. So you've probably come across the term a strong acid and a weak acid. So a strong acid is defined as being a, uh, an acid which will fully dissociate all its hydrogen ions in aqueous solution. That means that every molecule of that acid in water will release the hydrogen ions it possesses. And a nice little example of that would be mineral acids like hydrochloric acid. So here's an equation for hydrochloric acid here. So here's my hydrogen chloride molecule before it dissociates. When I dissolve it in water, you can see that every single hydrogen chloride molecule will release its hydrogen ion. And the word we use for that is dissociate and also release the chloride ion separately. So it's breaking down this covalent molecule from HCl into separate H plus ions and Cl minus ions, chloride ions. Um, so some common named acids you might want to remember. Most of the ones found in the lab. Definitely come across hydrochloric acid, HCl. And as, as you can see, the HCl loses one hydrogen ion per molecule. Sulfuric acid is another very common one you come across in school labs. That's the formula H2SO4, a sulfate ion and some hydrogen ions, and it releases two hydrogen ions per molecule. Nitric acid, HNO3, a nitrate ion, NO3 minus, and a hydrogen ion, and it releases one hydrogen ion per molecule. And maybe a slightly rarer example, but a nice example is phosphoric acid, a PO4 three minus ion, the phosphate ion, combined with three hydrogens. So therefore phosphoric acid can release three hydrogen ions per molecule of acid. These are all examples of mineral acids or what we call strong acids. They'll release as many hydrogen ions as there are molecules dissolved in the solution, in the water. But you probably also come across the term weak acids. So a weak acid is um, only partially dissociating in water. So what that means is um, it only, only a small proportion of a weak acid uh, molecule population will actually be releasing their hydrogen ions at any one time. A nice example of that would be vinegar or ethanoic acid, which is shown in the box here. Okay, so ethanoic acid is um, releasing hydrogen ion just like the other acids, but you can see that rather than being a full directional arrow, there is this reversible symbol, meaning it's a reversible reaction. So it's uh, also likely that the hydrogen ion will recombine, will reassociate with the um, CH3CO minus ion um, and reform the ethanoic acid original molecule. Um, and so the position of equilibrium for this particular equilibrium will be shifted heavily over to the left-hand side or moved to the left-hand side. So you're going to get a very small proportion of this dissociation happening. Maybe one in every 100 molecules, if you were to freeze them at any one moment, would be releasing their hydrogen ions. So producing a much weaker acidic solution as a result of that. And again, some examples of uh, weak acids you may have come across just in your studies include um, ethanoic acid or vinegar which is CH3COOH, an organic acid, and that's the hydrogen um, atom which will be result in, well, which is lost to form the hydrogen ions. This end one is the one which is uh, given away to give it its acidic properties, and it releases one hydrogen ion per molecule. 
Another one would be lactic acid. So lactic acid is built up in your muscles from anaerobic respiration. It's also a, a, a slightly different isomer of that is also found in gone off milk. Um, but this is the molecule, another organic acid, another carboxylic acid is what lactic acid is. Uh, but again, it's that end hydrogen, which is the one which is donated or dissociated, and it gives away one hydrogen ion per molecule. You've probably come across the term pH as well. In simple terms, pH is a measure of acidity. It's actually a relative measure of the hydrogen ion concentration of the acidic solution. Um, if you want to know more details about that, there'll be a video about pH separately. But uh, for simple terms, um, acids have a pH range of uh, 1 to 6, uh, and the lower the number, the greater the strength of the acid. So a pH value of 1 would uh, be associated with a strong acid, whereas a pH value of 6 would be associated with a very weak acid. And you can see the colour ranges of universal indicator help to illustrate which um, end of this uh, spectrum you're sitting at. So a red colour, deep red colour would indicate an acidity of 0, 1, 2, maybe even 3 sometimes. Orange colour might be closer to 5 and uh, a yellow colour would be closer to a pH of 6. 7 being green and neutral. So then I want to talk about alkalis and bases. So alkalis and bases are described as being caustic rather than corrosive, but the effect on organic tissue would be um, similar, the burning and the damage. Um, all, now people struggle, students often struggle with the difference between alkalis and bases and differentiating them can be a struggle. So this, these two definitions are designed to really help with that process. All alkalis are soluble hydroxides, usually metal hydroxides which are able to donate OH minus ions. So probably the key take home message for alkalis is they have to be soluble. They have to dissolve in water, otherwise you wouldn't classify them as an alkali, you classify them as a base. So they are substances with neutral, which can neutralize acids, but the key way they do that is by releasing OH minus or hydroxide ions into solution. And it's the hydroxide ions which react with the hydrogen ions uh, and neutralize the acid in the process. Bases, on the other hand, must be insoluble compounds, uh, which are able to accept hydrogen ions and therefore neutralize acids. So bases generally do not dissolve in water, unlike alkalis, which do. Um, again, we're looking at the pH range of alkalis and bases, particularly alkalis because they're soluble and therefore it's easy to determine this by adding a universal indicator. Their pH range will uh, be from 8 to 14, so above neutrality, above 7. And the colour range uh, indicated by universal indicator for alkalis and bases is uh, a sort of gr deep green to blue to purple range. The dark, dark green being about pH 8. Blues being indicative of pH is 10 to 12, maybe 10 to 11. And then pH is beyond 12, 13, 14 in particular, you're going to see a slightly more violet purple colour in your indicator, your universal indicator. So it's it's quite easy to spot uh, these differences, but um, subtle, chain, subtle differences, small differences in pH would be very difficult to identify using a universal indicator. Okay, so I want to focus now on the reactions of uh, acids and also neutralization, and we'll finish with salts. So first of all, neutralization reactions. Um, you come across these a lot in chemistry. Uh, many reactions uh, turn out to be or neutralization reactions, but a simple way of considering them is a neutralization reaction is when an acid reacts with either an alkali or a base to form neutral products, most often a salt and water. Um, thinking about that in its simplest ionic terms, you take the hydrogen ion, which is the acidic aspect, the acidic particle from acids, and it reacts with the alkali ion released by the alkali molecule itself, which is the OH minus ion. So the acidic ion from acids, released by acids, reacts with the alkali ion, hydroxide ion, released by the alkali itself in solution to form the neutral water molecule. That's a simple ionic uh, equation to represent a neutralization reaction. There are four key general equations for the reactions of acids. Each one um, is an aid memoir essentially to help you remember um, these key general products when you try and write real equations for these sorts of reactions. The first one is called sometimes called MASH uh, and it stands for metals, so a, a metal which is reactive enough to, to react with a dilute acid, so something above copper for example in the reactivity series, metal plus acid arrow forms a salt, a neutral compound called a salt, 
which I'll explain the definition of later, and hydrogen gas. So that's the first general equation for an acid reaction. All acid, acids react with um, react, reactive enough metals to form salts and hydrogen gas. So you'll see fizzing and bubbling in those reactions. Second general equation for acid reactions is an acid reacts with a base, a neutralizing uh, base, to form salt, neutral salt and water. Now bases, the most common bases you come across in, in, in uh, your studies are, are metal oxides. Okay, so a metal oxide compound, is often, which is going to be insoluble, is often classified as a base. The third set of reactions, and the fourth, the third reaction you're going to come across is um, acids reacting with uh, alkalis to form salt and water. So very similar in style to the base reaction. The only difference is, remember, that alkalis are soluble and therefore dissolve in water. And secondly, they are often metal hydroxides. That's the most common alkali you're going to come across. So in, in most labs, you'll have bottles of sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide available for any alkali um, experiments. And finally, uh, the last general equation for acids is uh, acids reacting with metal carbonates. These are carbonate compounds to form salt, water and carbon dioxide. So again, you'll see fizzing in this experiment, uh, neutral salt, neutral water and carbon dioxide. Metal carbonates contain the carbonate ion. That's the CO3 2 minus ion in their formula. OK, so the final um, task is to name the salts, the neutral salts formed in these reactions and think about their formulae as well. So first of all, I'd like to define what a salt actually is. So a salt essentially uh, is a compound formed uh, in an acid uh, base or alkali reaction, but it's, an, it's a compound formed when the acid molecule donates its hydrogen ion or ions if it has more than one. We're talking about sulfuric acid, for example, and in its place, it accepts uh, a positive ion, uh, such as a metal ion or an ammonium ion, from the alkali or base it's reacted with. So it's kind of like a swapping over of the key positive ion. So if we take um, hydrochloric acid and sodium oxide as example, the hydrochloric acid is going to donate away its hydrogen ion, and in its place it's going to accept the metal positive ion from the alkali, which in this case is the sodium ion. So out goes the hydrogen ion when it reacts, and in comes the metal ion from the hydroxide. So we form our salt, which is taking the metal component, the metal ion from the alkali, and combine it with a non-metal component of the acid, which was not the hydrogen ion which has been donated. So you can see that that's sodium from the alkali, chloride from the acid, sodium chloride is the salt. So here is a grid of some common acids and common alkalized bases or carbonates. And the aim here is just to show you guys how you can write the name and the formula of each of those uh, salts formed in various reactions. So remember, hydrochloric acid contains hydrogen ions and chloride, well, will release hydrogen ions and chloride ions when it dissolves. Um, so the key thing is it's going to release those hydrogen ions uh, and act like an acid. Sulfuric acid, when it dissolves, releases two hydrogen ions and a sulfate ion, SO42-. And nitric acid, when it dissolves, releases a hydrogen ion and a nitrate ion, which is NO3-. minus. The key thing, therefore, is to combine the non-metal component of the acid, which isn't the hydrogen donated, with the metal ion from whatever the alkali base or carbonate is. So I've got sodium hydroxide, I've got um, sodium hydroxide, so, uh, calcium oxide as my base, and magnesium carbonate as my um, carbonate. But you'll see when it comes to naming my salt, I ignore the oxide, hydroxide, and carbonate component. All I'm focusing on is what metal ion has come from the base or alkali, and what's the non-metal component of the acid, which is not the hydrogen. So sodium chloride, uh, so sodium ion from the base, chloride ion from the acid, gives me the formula of the salt sodium chloride. And so one, it, 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 that's the correct formula because I need to balance the charges of the sodium and chloride to create a neutral um, formula with no overall charge. Uh, and plus one, minus one balances perfectly. So that formula is correct. And the name of that is sodium chloride, that compound. Second reaction, a calcium is a group two metal. So it forms a two plus ion. Chloride ions are, well, chlorine is group seven. So each chloride ion has a minus one charge. So to balance out those charges, I need to bring two chloride ions to every one calcium two plus to give me a neutral uh, compound overall. OK, so calcium chloride. I mean, by neutral, I mean no overall charge. And also it is a neutral compound as well because it has no, it has a pH of seven because it's a salt. So um, 
The correct formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2, balancing out the two minus one ions against the one plus two ion, and the name of that is calcium chloride. Um, finally, magnesium ion is also a group two metal, forming a two plus ion, and again, chloride is um, a minus one ion because it's a group seven element. I need two minus one chloride ions to, to cancel out the charge of a single plus two magnesium ion, so the formula is MgCl2. And that's the only formula it could have, which is correct. Again, it's a neutral salt with no with a pH of seven, and the name is magnesium chloride. So you'll note the trend or pattern there is that hydrochloric acid reactions form chloride salts. Second row is sulfuric acid, and I'll do this a bit quicker this time. So um, sodium plus one iron, sulfate minus two. Need two sodiums to every one sulfate, giving us Na2SO4. Sodium sulfate is the name. Calcium sulfate, okay, the calcium is group two metal, therefore plus two iron. Sulfate is an, a polyatomic iron we need to learn, but its charge is two minus, and always two minus, and it always comes in this molecular package, if you like. So the formula is CaSO4 to balance out the positive and negative charges against each other, and the name is calcium sulfate. Similarly, magnesium sulfate has the same sort of pattern, two plus iron for magnesium group two metal, sulfate still minus two, plus two iron is perfectly balanced out in terms of charge by a minus two iron, so that formula is correct as it, as it is as a one-to-one -one ratio of magnesium to sulfate, and the name is magnesium sulfate. So again, the great pattern here in terms of naming salts is any um, sulfuric acid reaction with an alkali base or a carbonate will form a sulfate salt. And finally, nitric acid. Uh, so again, sodium plus one, nitrate is a polyatomic army to learn with a minus one charge, Plus one, minus one, balance each other out perfectly, cancel each other out perfectly, so the formula is NaNO3, and we call that sodium nitrate. Calcium 2 plus ion, group 2 metal, uh, but this time I'm remembering that each nitrate has a minus one charge, so I need two nitrate ions to completely cancel the charge of the calcium ion to give us our um, overall uh, uncharged um, formula. Uh, it's a neutral salt, pH 7. But the key thing I've had to do here is put a bracket around the NO3. The reason for that is if I wrote CaNO32 without the bracket around the NO3 component, what that would read as to the observer is one calcium, one nitrogen, and 32 oxygens. And that's not what we're trying to communicate. So we have to put a bracket around the NO3 polyatomic iron before we put the two afterwards in the subscript number. Otherwise, we wouldn't be saying two nitrates. We'd be saying two, well, lots more oxygen. So it's Ca and two nitrate ions. And the name of that compound is calcium nitrate. Again, ATE because the nitrogen and oxygen uh, molecule has both elements. And finally, magnesium nitrate, uh, Mg2+, group two uh, metal, forms a two plus ion. Uh, each nitrate brings a minus one charge, uh, so I need to bring another nitrate, so two minus one ions to balance out the charge of a, of a plus two magnesium. And again, I need to bring the bracket because if I didn't, I'd be saying Mg, N and O32. And what I mean to say is Mg and two nitrates. Um, and the name of that is magnesium nitrate. So again, the great pattern here is that any reaction of nitric acid with an alkali um, base or carbonate will form a nitrate salt. So there you go, guys. Hopefully that grid has helped you guys to name some salts, draw some salt formulae, and generally understand the action and behavior of acids, alkalis, and bases.